Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Lisa Desoy, and I'd like to welcome you all to this afternoon's session on digital transformation and fintech. Uh, just before we get started, I'll begin with a couple of uh, housekeeping notices. Uh, we would love to encourage your participation in today's, uh, in today's session, and we do encourage you to submit your questions to today's speaker. You can do that uh, in two different ways. You can either type us in your question using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen, or alternatively, um, we would encourage you to raise your hand uh, and we will take the opportunity to invite you to speak and ask, uh, and ask Ron your, your questions directly. So um, today's session, I'm very excited and pleased to welcome Mr. Ron Raffensperger, um, who is joining us today. He is the CTO of Digital Transformation and for, for the Financial Industry at Huawei. Uh, so welcome, Ron. Thank you so much for joining us today. And today's event uh, will be uh, focusing on uh, uh, reviewing the fintech trends uh, that are taking place uh, in, with regards to digital transformation. And we will be discussing why traditional financial institutions must increase the speed of digital transformation and adopt technologies such as open banking and, and, and mobile ecosystems to effective, effectively compete. Um, today's speaker, uh, Ron Raffensperger, has over 30 years of experience in the IT, software and telecom industries and has in-depth knowledge of the financial industry. He has a broad background in cloud computing, databases, big data and high performance computing. Ron has held senior positions in marketing, strategy, sales and development at Siemens, IBM and ROLM, telecommunications, along with startup companies in the database and SaaS industries. Welcome, Ron. And at this point, I will hand over to you for the rest of today's session. Thank you. Uh, Lisa, thank you very much for the uh, for the introduction. I'm really uh, excited about being here. And uh, actually, I would be much more excited if I could actually be in Mauritius. Uh, I, I had, have been there once a, a number of years ago, and, and it was just a, a, just a, a lovely place. And I, hopefully, uh, when we get some of this uh, behind us, uh, I, I'll be able to return. I'm actually presently in, uh, in Johannesburg in, in South Africa. Normally, I'm based in our corporate headquarters in Shenzhen. Um, but uh, it's kind of a long story, but I ended up here. So yeah. when, I, well, we when look, I go back we, to, yeah. We look forward to welcoming you here uh, very soon, Ron. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it, it's, it's zero degrees here in the morning, so I'm definitely looking forward <laughs> to it. <laughs> so um, today, uh, what I'd like to do, and uh, as Lisa mentioned, please, if there are any questions that come up during the presentation, uh, raise your hand. And, uh, and and we'll stop and address them. And to the extent that this can be a little interactive, I think that that would be, uh, that'd be wonderful. Um, so we're gonna talk today about digital transformation and uh, FinTech, not FinTechs as companies, but financial technologies uh, that can help uh, people in the financial in services industry be able to more effectively compete and meet the needs of their customers. Um, so we'll start off talking a, a little bit about trends um, and then go a little bit more into detail and then a little bit about how uh, Huawei can uh, address some of these issues. I think the biggest thing, and because I'm based in China, uh, where a, a lot of the transformation in, in the financial services industry has happened. I mean, I've been uh, with Huawei in China for 14 years now, and when I first got to to China from the US. Um, the US was primarily, and, and in many ways still is, a, a debit card uh, business. Uh, you pay for everything from your Starbucks coffee to um, large uh, items uh, by scanning a card and all merchants have some kind of a, a card uh, scanning capability. When I got to China, I found out that essentially that didn't exist and that what, um, it was a, a cash society and you would you would go to the bank and you would see little old ladies with shopping carts and unloading uh, uh, stacks of bills. And uh, there was no concept of things like uh, a cashier's check or or anything like that. And certainly no no personal checks and virtually none of the the uh, 
um, businesses had uh, the ability to car scan cards. Um, over the last few years, that has dramatically turned around. And now, uh, essentially, it's very difficult uh, to do uh, any transactions in cash. Um, the, the, the central bank actually had to put out a, a notice uh, about a year and a half ago reminding businesses that it was illegal not to accept cash. Uh, but in fact, uh, you, you're really hard pressed uh, to use cash. And the, the reason is because everything has turned to mobile. Um, so all of uh, what, what's happening with our customers, uh, particularly in the consumer space, is that they're being um, indoctrinated, if you will, or um, by the mobile applications, whether it's uh, Amazon for online ordering or, or Grab or uh, Uber for, uh, for ride hailing, all of these different services are uh, provided through mobile applications and people have become very comfortable with using that. And countries like Mauritius have very high penetration rates of uh, smart devices that can run these applications. And so customers are, are expecting to be able to, to use their, their phones for pretty much everything. And that's only accelerated during the pandemic when people have been locked at home um, and it just is uh, much more, uh, much easier to be able to order things. And so that the uh, things that people are doing in their lives, they have a dev uh, desire to be able to do everything wherever they happen to be uh, with the mobile device that they're carrying around. And that includes their financial scenarios uh, as well. So this is really uh, accelerating the evolution of financial services. Um, this is also, the pandemic has also caused a lot of changes at banks. Um, you know, the, the time of going and, and uh, spending a lot of time in the waiting area being uh, to, to see a, uh, a teller about a particular action um, really has been uh, changed during the pandemic. Uh, first step has been in many cases, to go to more intelligent devices. So a lot of the routine activities that tellers would do, account opening um, and that kind of thing uh, are moved to machines. Um, but of course, then the uh, the machines have to be sanitized and 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 the people have to come to the branch, right? And and it, then you have to sanitize all of the branch areas and that, and that sort of thing. So um, what we've seen is, that banks are moving uh, as quickly as they can to try to um, digitize all of their operations, get rid of the, the need to actually do things with, with people. Um, and regulators have been supportive of this and changing some of the processes around the KYC, the know your customer kinds of things so that things like account opening and, and that sort of thing can be done without um, having to have a face-to-face -face connection uh, with the bank employee. Um, being able to collect all of that information then really changes the way that people deal, uh, the, the way that banks uh, can um, provide services to their customers because now they have much more information that can support things like uh, risk control and, and marketing as well. If, if you have lots of information about what your customers are doing, you can more accurately provide new kinds of services to them. You can do cross-selling, you can do um, social group selling uh, because you want to integrate with the social capabilities to be able to uh, expand your reach uh, as a financial institution. And so, as I mentioned in China, we've seen essentially the replacement of the uh, physical cash uh, by digital payments. And it really was accelerated uh, by the use of QR codes. The availability of smartphones with cameras um, meant that anybody who has a QR code, they don't even have to have a smartphone. They can just have a piece of, of paper that has a QR code on it um, and people can now pay them. Um, and in fact, you know, when, when if I stop on the street to get my shoes shined in, in, in China now, the, the person will, will pull out a, a little card with a QR code on it and I scan it and pay them. Um, and this has really um, accelerated the adoption of digital payments, and it's created 
um, new kinds of use cases. So the um, servers, services in China, it, very common in China to do what are at, at um, special events to do what are called red packets, where you actually have a, a physical red envelope, you put money in it um, and to give it to, to somebody. Um, and that has, has almost all moved online now, but it was a major um, uh, advantage to these uh, services to be able to provide that. And when you do that, again, you capture more and more information about the customers um, and you help move towards the, being able to improve the customer uh, experience. So part of this is as you do more and more that's digital, you have a feedback and you have to be able to uh, change your own internal processes. And we'll talk a little bit more about that because that's a big part of the journey of trying to do a digital transformation. So one of the examples uh, from this is uh, WeChat in China. Uh, they uh, started life essentially as a, like a, a Twitter or a Facebook kind of a social applications. Um, and then um, moved into the digital payment space. They were the first one to use this concept of a QR code uh, as a way to pay. Um, and then they built a platform where other people could have applications that connect onto the, the WeChat platform and they get seamlessly integrated into it. So um, the WeChat application on my phone, uh, I can see uh, uh, movie theater tickets, I can see um, train tickets, all of these kinds of things, and they can then uh, connect through the WeChat platform to be able to provide payments. And they've now uh, are moving beyond that in to being able to supply new kinds of services for businesses. Uh, so it starts as a consumer and then moves through businesses uh, accepting payments and then business management and then things like uh, supply chain, supply chain management, this sort of thing. So um, it really becomes an ecosystem that drives the, the customer experience. And so what's happening for banks is that we are a uh, need to move from uh, products uh, focused, right? I think probably all financial institutions now have some type of a mobile application but most of them are focused around the typical financial functions, right? So I can uh, look up my balance, I can uh, move money between different accounts. Uh, maybe I can transfer money to other people at the same uh, financial institution, um, but they're pretty much totally focused around the financial use cases. And um, what has to happen though, if we're going to compete uh, with the FinTechs and with the, um, the internet-based players like the WeChats that are starting to expand. I mean, we're already seeing uh, WhatsApp trying to move into the financial services space as an example. Um, we need to have uh, support for platforms. So, and banks can't do all of this, right? The, the, the focus really from a, a, a financial institution is to move from everything is within my control to opening things up so that I can uh, plug in new kinds of services, and that experience uh, becomes seamless. And at least uh, uh, most importantly is I can get all of that information so that I can be able to provide new services, expand my customers, uh, hold on to my existing customers, uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, one of the challenges in doing this, of course, is that the usage really changes. So, you know, when when we had internet banking, um, really all we did was move the function of the teller to the customer and the, the customer would type all the same things the teller did. Um, but when we move to mobile, we need to rethink that journey of what does the customer need to enter? Um, and we also have to expect that the customer will access the services anytime, any place. And so you have to be able to um, uh, be able to react your your technical environment has to be able to react much more quickly to the kinds of access it's going to be so that you can have peaks of uh, transactions that happen at unexpected times. Maybe, you know, there, there's a sale through, a, through an e-commerce site and suddenly all of your usage goes straight up. You can't predict that. You have to be able to put in place a platform 
that can react automatically. Uh, and that's uh, where we get into uh, things that people talk about technology-wise, uh, like uh, uh, DevOps and microservices and these sort of things. So the key going forward is to be able to offer these uh, universal uh, financial services. So starting with the traditional kinds of technology that are uh, uh, banking services, uh, moving into new kinds of offerings, uh, and probably also uh, into things like uh, wallets. So when, when WeChat first started their service and started uh, accepting payments, you had to um, put money into their wallets. There was not uh, it wasn't easily connected into bank accounts. Uh, and so most of the solutions we're seeing that are starting to come out now uh, have the concept of being able to keep money uh, within the mobile application uh, that can then be moved back and forth to banks as necessary. Then we need to be able, and as a result of doing that, we have opportunities to offer new kinds of services. Um, we can automate because of the knowledge of the transactions that we have. We can automate things like uh, overdraft. Um, people can can you know get small overdraft uh, protection uh, to be able to buy things that they need right now. Um, you can offer small kinds of loans uh, with automated kinds of repayments. Lots of opportunities for new kinds of services, and then we move into the integration with different kinds of lifestyle things. Uh, you know, being able to have different kinds of insurance offerings. Uh, as well as the a little more common ones like paying your utility bills uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and then in the future, we can move into the more advanced capabilities like being able to do supply chain finance, be able to actually uh, integrate uh, supply chains into the uh, the environment. Um, in, in China, um, one of the, the leading banks that has focused around mobile uh, not only mobile first, but actually mobile, uh, always mobile. So even their internal applications that used to be PCs have now mostly been replaced by using uh, uh, mobile phones and tablets. Um, but they changed the way that they measured their company, their bank, um, from things like uh, you know traditional banking KPIs to the what's called monthly active users, which is a, a measurement that a Google or a Facebook will use because it measures the engagement. It measures how often people are uh, uh, spending on your application. And if you do that, then you focus around creating this environment where people can get everything from within your application. Uh, and so their monthly active users grew very quickly uh, to over 100 million, uh, because it's services not only for their customers, uh, but also for uh, other people that, that can get other services off of the platform. And maybe in the future, then they can be enticed to become uh, customers of China merchants. Um, and an interesting statistic is that 72% of the uh, usage of their mobile application are non-financial things. They're things like e-commerce or uh, movie tickets or ride hailing, these kinds of things. Another good example of opening things up to be able to become the center of people's lives is DBS in Singapore. And they created a whole uh, open API infrastructure and have uh, more than 500 uh, APIs that they've published and have more than 400 partners that are utilizing their these APIs to provide uh, services. So this, these are two different ways to focus around opening up capabilities that provide new opportunities for financial services. Um, and so these digital operations and services are going to be the really the core capabilities for, for banks uh, in the future. So we're going to move from you know thinking about customers and cards and, and individual services, uh, and you know the the uh, um, kinds of systems that we typically have now to focus around the users, uh, mobile as the engagement pl platform, uh, universal kinds of services, not just financial, um, and about the, uh, the the digital journey of the customer. 
one of the things that is the hardest about a digital transformation is to rethink the customer journey. And this also has an impact on the organization because you need to, to change your processes. Uh, and that has uh, as much of an impact as the technology uh, changes within an organization. And then of course, opening things up. You, none, none of this can happen if you, if you keep a closed environment. And that's one of the challenges. Um, so some of the major areas are things like uh, customer acquisition, do that completely digitally, um, and to be able to use uh, uh, capabilities like referral marketing. Um, if you link in with social networking uh, and people can uh, report when they've used your services into their Facebook feeds or uh, WhatsApp, that sort of thing, then you automatically are able to expand through their social graph and so it, very powerful and very low cost marketing capabilities. Um, you need to uh, be able to link into other kinds of banks. It, it, it's not gonna be uh, uh, really strong in the future. If you're only looking at your customers, you need to focus around other kinds of customers as well as around the uh, ability to um, uh, have different banks and, and and customers uh, that are still unbanked uh, as well. Um, and then the services uh, being digital uh, and particularly on the mobile devices and to think through some of the things that are gonna happen in the future around the internet of things, uh, because that uh, will uh, start to offer new kinds of opportunities going forward. And again, thinking about it as an end-to-end -end integrated journey. Um, and then, you have to operate this uh, differently than you have historically, where historically we've had silos. You know, we've got the, the mainframe or the core banking system. We've got another system around uh, uh, maybe business loans, another one around uh, the CRM system, these kinds of things. Um, these now all need to get integrated. But if you try to manage them the same way that you've been managing your existing uh, technologies, um, it won't work because so many things are going to become automated that the system itself needs to be able to automatically uh, deal with the need to increase resources, decrease resources, troubleshoot, uh, and that sort of thing. So um, very uh, much need to move to a new kind of thinking around digital operations. And so we believe that uh, by uh, taking advantage of technologies like cloud computing, uh, like some of the emerging things. Uh, uh, Mauritius is one of the leaders in deployment of 5G, and you're starting to see new kinds of applications around the Internet of Things. Um, and then uh, concepts like uh, AI. I've mentioned a number of times that you're going to get lots and lots of data that have come out of this environment, but you have to do something with it. You have it. It's it, otherwise it's just you know taking up storage space, um, but you have huge amounts of intelligence that you can get out of this. Uh, and using uh, big data and AI technologies are the way to be able to not only have more effective marketing, a much better risk control, uh, lower your your costs uh, by being able to more accurately predict uh, customer behaviors and attract new new kinds of customers. So. Uh, really become an intelligent bank um, and, the, and the platform that's going to connect all of these different kinds of services together. So being able to build an ecosystem really is a key part of this. And then you can have new kinds of services that come in um, that are, you know, enterprises that are automatically distributing uh, capabilities. You can offer marketing services, uh, different kinds of, of coupons, all sorts of, of services once you have uh, taken advantage of these new uh, types of technologies. So in our view, this whole focus is around what we call mobile intelligent banking. And it really is um, covering a lot of different areas. If we begin at the bottom of this chart, um, one of the things that uh, we've seen that banks struggle with is that the whole concept of business continuity management changes when you have 24 by seven and everything is focused around mobile, um, you, you need to think about having uh, what are called active active kinds of data centers so that you can ensure you never have anything 
uh, that will interrupt services. Um, and you need to uh, change your internal management to be able to support this as well. I think a lot of us got a wake up call uh, with the pandemic of, you know, everybody had a, a, a business continuity plan, but very, I don't know of any who had one that said, you know, all of a sudden every branch has to close uh, and all of our employees have to work from home. So pretty much everybody had to scramble. And so rethinking a lot of these things, particularly around a mobile environment uh, is, is necessary. Um, and then you have to, uh, we think, speed up your digital transformation by moving towards uh, mobile. And we have the, the it's a concept that many people are now calling super app, which is essentially a framework. Uh, and you plug in not only your own applications, but all of these other kinds of things like the right healing and that sort of thing that, that we've been talking about. Um, and to be able to do that, you have to change the way you do development, you have to change the way you do operations um, and be able to move uh, to the, the uh, new types of, of technologies that can support these new capabilities. So when we when we focus around the business side of this, then um, think about the mobility. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, many banks like China merchants have gone from just thinking of mobile as the way to uh, have customers do their work to actually having mobile the way to uh, as the way that everybody does their work, including being able to um, communicate with their customers. So rather than saying, oh, let's talk on WhatsApp, let's talk within the application, right? It's very easy to add uh, things like chatting and, and video uh, communications so that the customers feel uh, always connected to the bank, even though they're never coming into your branches or, or sell them at least. Um, you need to have the right people to be able to have this kind of uh, uh, agility within your organization, which is a, a business uh, statement as well as a technology statement, and and rethink your your processes. And then uh, digitalization, uh, just being able to make sure that everything is uh, a digital process that you can, uh, to the extent that that regulators allow, and and your own you know security, security people, you want to get rid of paper, right? Everything should be digital, and that even if you're scanning. Uh, a hard copy that is necessary for things like uh, um, verification of identity or, or things like this, um, you need to store them digitally and you need to be able to process them, uh, which brings up the concept of this big data and data lakes and um, making sure that everything comes together uh, within that in environment so that you can get access to, to the intelligence based on all the data that you have. Uh, and then finally, it you have to operate it uh, almost uh, completely automatically. You you can't have a lot of people running around in a in a, a technical uh, network operations center trying to troubleshoot individual problems. Because they, they new kinds of technologies don't really fit with that. So when you do that, um, you can really support the banking everywhere. Uh, you can have the this ecosystem that I've been talking about and. Now you can expand your services. So uh, not just uh, to uh, consumers, but also to businesses and businesses to businesses, as well as the uh, governmental services. So a lot of opportunities in creating this, uh, this structure. I mentioned China Merchants Bank before. Um, then they are pretty much uh, in, in China considered the, the leader as far as innovation related to consumer banking um, and their transformation strategy. I mentioned them uh, moving to their mobile active users. Uh, this chart shows how quickly that expanded. Um, and over the, you know, just within the, the uh, uh, 2017 up to through the end of 2019. Um, so, you know, 20 million up to more than 100 million. So very, fast expansion and you have to put in place the uh, technology and the processes to be able to support that kind of thing. Uh, so now let's uh, de delve a little more deeply into, okay, so, you know, this is the picture of where we wanna go, how do we get there? Um, and the, the, uh, the keys are really um, from an architecture standpoint, 
are around uh, mobility, uh, agility, and then uh, doing things uh, in the cloud. So um, we need to take the, the different applications and the processes that we have now, uh, which are very much siloed, very, a lot of manual processes, a lot of things have to be, you know, people have to do in person uh, and move that into uh, technologies like microservices that um, allow you to very easily and quickly add new capabilities, need to improve our automation so that uh, we don't need the, the people and the process steps. Um, and we think that that uh, we're really going to be moving towards a hybrid cloud. So there will be some things that, that banks can do in public clouds, uh, uh, su subject to you know the regulators, uh, but regulators are, are changing relatively quickly related to what kinds of things uh, they'll allow in, uh, in, a, in a public cloud. Um, and then, uh, but there are very strong reasons to keep certain things in your own data center. Um, and so the concept of a hybrid cloud where you have, you know, some things in your data centers, other things in the public cloud, but it's all tied together and managed as one environment, and may, even including maybe moving workloads back and forth. These are very important uh, capabilities and they really um, are need to be part of the planning as you look at, at going forward. Because you, it will not be able to be um, the kind of responsiveness that your customers expect and the uh, ability to react quickly uh, to new customer requirements, new marketing uh, opportunities, that sort of thing, if you're not using uh, cloud types of technologies. Not necessarily on public cloud, they could be on your own internal uh, cloud that's part of the hybrid cloud environment. So to be able to do that, uh, we really need to change our IT environments. And that's um, a lot around the uh, mobile, of course, um, and connecting everything together. Uh, and we see an awful lot of our banking customers now um, are, are beginning to move things off of their monolithic uh, core banking types of systems. They're creating uh, different kinds of, of, of clouds. So not necessarily physical clouds, but logical clouds. Being able to uh, shadow all your transactions within a cloud kind of environment um, and take that uh, those uh, read kinds of transactions and which are the majority of, of the activity that occurs um, with mobile uh, and, and be able to uh, start moving that off and, and replicating it and then um, taking load off of the mainframe. So we have a lot of uh, customers we're working with to offload uh, mainframe and core banking kinds of systems, creating the uh, transaction clouds, and, uh, uh, virtual clouds for the mobile applications, uh, for the big data and AI analysis, um, and then for services like uh, branch marketing, and then the uh, separate API environments so that you can uh, create this ecosystem uh, that we've been talking about. So these are, are some of the key technology concepts that we think will be important. Um, I mentioned before that that hybrid clouds are, you know, are very important, we believe, going forward. Um, you want to make sure that you can manage everything, but you also want to have the flexibility. Um, you know, going to a public cloud, uh, it, you can always end up in a vendor lock-in situation, just as uh, you could within your own uh, enterprise IT. Um, and so being able to have flexibility and be able to move workloads where it makes sense uh, at a particular time is, is very important. So um, you have you know, the internal private clouds and then different kinds of public clouds uh, that can be put in this together. It really is about creating a, a federation. Um, so that you can have the different kinds of services that can be spread across the, the clouds, um, but you want to have unified management. You don't want to have to constantly be uh, managing different kinds of environments. One of the things that will happen when you start moving to a mobile and a, and a cloud environment is that your networking will change dramatically uh, because people are coming, as I mentioned before, the, the workloads are going to uh, come at you at unexpected times, uh, but also it's going to 
uh, they're going to come from unexpected places, right? Because they're going to be using their mobile devices wherever they happen to be. Um, and so, uh, and particularly as we move forward with the the uh, Internet of Things uh, driven by uh, technologies like 5G, uh, we're going to have cases where it's it's things that are are interacting with the financial services, uh, not uh, people, not always people. Um, and so that will also change the networking capabilities and will uh, change the use cases because uh, you'll get very lots of very short messages, but it will be important for you, particularly if you're doing things like supply chain financing or uh, even you know some sometime in the future where where our automated uh, autonomous vehicles will pull into a charging station, charge themselves up, uh, and pay the bill uh, without any people being involved. So lots of new kinds of use cases that are going to drive a lot of networking uh, capabilities, um, and that is not just outside, uh, but it's also within the data center. And so the data centers. I mentioned we need to move to things like active active so you have uh, two data centers that are that are running in parallel uh, so that if one goes down the other one can handle all the load that has a need for uh, very good connections between the data centers but it also um, it has an impact when you're a disaster recovery center uh, and the networking within the data center itself so concepts around software defined networking uh, will become very important uh, for the ability to um, get the most out of the resources that you have. So separate the kinds of uh, networking that you're familiar with today to ones that are being controlled by software, much higher levels of efficiency uh, and that sort of thing. Um, so in the era, this area, uh, Huawei has uh, an integrated system that can um, that is also open and could be uh, combined with other uh, technologies that are out there, but you have a, a, a unified uh, software defined networking within the data center, between data centers, and even out to the edge. So uh, more and more we're seeing branches uh, that are being connected using a uh, software defined wide area network or so-called SD-WAN. And you want to be able to make sure that you can network all of those things together in one environment. And I've mentioned many times that we need to have this open uh, foundation. So the open uh, APIs, if we're going to create a, a partner ecosystem, then uh, we have to have the open it up with the capabilities that people want to be able to utilize uh, to advance their businesses. Um, so you you need to set up um, not, not only external APIs, but internal ones as well. I mean, the, the key to being able to uh, flexibly adopt uh, the new kinds of technologies is to have very well-defined internal APIs so that your development teams can start uh, pulling things out put, and putting them where they belong um, without having a huge impact on the environment. And then, of course, the external APIs that we talked about uh, and the uh, new kinds of, of platforms, uh, or particularly around big data using AI, because these are also services that you can provide through your ecosystem. So you can uh, provide uh, credit worthiness kinds of things based on your data. You could provide, uh, uh, in fact, um, get ahead of the curve to, to offer new kinds of services uh, to your customers. So uh, these are very uh, important to be able to put in, into place. And as I've mentioned, it really depends on being able to have and store and process all of the different kinds of data. So it's not just um, typical kinds of uh, uh, transaction or database kinds of information, structured data, but it's also uh, unstructured. It's things like social media feeds. It's things like um, being able to uh, bring in call center records, uh, being able to uh, incorporate everything, including uh, uh, video that might be from uh, uh, branch activities, that sort of stuff. So you know, lots of different kinds of uh, data need to be put together in, in, a, in a unified data uh, repository. Many people call it data lake. Um, and then you need to be able to analyze it using uh, big data and AI technology. So new kinds of uh, solutions that can come out of this and a lot of uh, changes in activities. So 
you know, the uh, China merchants is a good example. They It used to take them uh, three weeks to give a small business an answer on a loan. Um, and, and by putting all of the information into a data lake and utilizing AI technologies, they move the whole thing to online and it happens in seconds. Uh, so these are the kinds of things that people are looking for. And so then the uh, you have to be able to, of course, store all of this data. And uh, Huawei has a number of technologies around all flash for the kinds of very fast uh, storage that are needed in the area of, and for supporting uh, mobile, um, but also huge storage and uh, software defined distributed storage that can be utilized for very large uh, uh, data lakes um, up into the, you know, all, almost up to the exabyte, exabyte uh, area. So these are the different kinds of capabilities. And of course, you have to be able to manage all of that. And so uh, that's a, a major focus uh, for us. So the, the, uh, this, uh, when you put that kind of thing together, uh, you have lots of different data sources. You have this converged data lake. Um, and then uh, by utilizing the, the data warehousing and AI capabilities, uh, you can offer new kinds of innovative services, uh, better marketing, uh, risk control. Um, we have a number of customers that have really ex ex expanded their real-time risk control through this, uh, these technologies uh, and reduced the level of uh, uh, risk that they're actually seeing while speeding up the availability of, uh, of credit and, and uh, other solutions. And then of course, the, the, the uh, so um, some of the, the savings that we've seen out of this are TCO uh, reductions of up to 50%, uh, huge amounts of data that can be stored and, and performance increases uh, within the business of uh, numbers up around 30%. Um, so the last area to, to really talk about is the on the digital core, um, because the as many banks already have their core banking systems, they could be uh, mainframe or they could be uh, running on other kinds of uh, platforms. Uh, but in the future, you need to be able to migrate that into the uh, 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 a more flexible and uh, expandable system. So. These are two examples of customers of ours working with our partners uh, to provide solutions around uh, um, new kinds of core banking systems. Uh, one is from Thailand, the other one from, from Kenya. Uh, and it's an example of Huawei. We have a very broad ecosystem of partners that we can uh, rely on to help our customers to be able to, to solve their uh, business uh, problems. So uh, we have uh, the ability to help you in redesigning the architecture and being able to give you a lot of uh, input related to uh, moving to digital operations because of the experience we have around the world. Um, and so we can really help in, in dealing with all of the new kinds of challenges that banks and financial institutions are starting to see as they move to a mobile first type of, of environment. Um, one area to touch briefly on, there's a lot of discussion in the industry about what is the future of branches? Um, do they go away um, or what? And we've seen, I think globally, more than 30% of all branches uh, have closed. Many of those will not reopen because of things like mobile engagement that people don't need to go uh, into a branch anymore. Um, but we believe that there are new opportunities for the branches to become more engagement centers for learning and for uh, community kinds of activities. Um, and so uh, new kinds of uh, uh, learning around investing and, and that kind of thing. So there are a lot of opportunities to re redesign the customer's journey and have a new kind of uh, capability uh, within uh, the branch. Briefly, uh, where uh, Huawei can help in this is in we have a, a solutions framework, and I'm not sure how many of you know, but Huawei has uh, very strong offerings in the infrastructure, uh, networking, the storage, and and this sort of thing. 
Um, and then uh, we have uh, the uh, cloud computing capabilities that we've been talking about. Uh, we have a public cloud. Uh, we have the ability to do hybrid clouds, that sort of thing. Um, and as the technologies are um, brought to, to bear around the, the uh, infrastructure or, uh, platform as a service, so things like uh, the microservices and Dev DevOps uh, containers, that kind of thing. And then that um, with our partners, uh, we can provide uh, more complete solutions for customers for uh, products. Uh, and then also in areas like uh, migrations or offloadings. Uh, uh, one area uh, we have a lot of pieces is in what we call our smart branch. Um, as 5G and IoT uh, get uh, more deployed, um, there's an opportunity to connect the branches to do new kinds of things, uh, to use new technologies around um, smart cameras for you know, to make sure that people have masks when they come into the branch, uh, and also for uh, uh, better security, that kind of thing, um, new technologies there, the software to find um, wide area networking to lower your costs of connecting these branches as you add more bandwidth. Uh, and so lot, at lots of cases, uh, we've been working with, uh, branch, uh, with banks around being able to uh, figure out what kinds of new technologies could be or uh, new new services could be offered based on things like 5G uh, and uh, and IoT, and we're happy to engage to have those discussions uh, as well. A uh, couple of examples: uh, this is uh, KBZ in in Myanmar uh, has uh, been using Huawei's mobile money platform. Uh, we have a very strong mobile payment platform with an, a wallet system, and it has um, all of these uh, API, uh, so-called super app capabilities that are part of it. And they uh, went from a very small uh, uh, bank that was just uh, in the, the major urban areas uh, to a, a countrywide bank with uh, more than, than uh, 11 million uh, downloads of their application. They got up over 8 uh, million customers from about a half million uh, within a little more than than two years, so very quick growth uh, based on the platform that we uh, worked on with them. Um, we have, as I mentioned, storage, uh, our uh, uh, flash storage for uh, being able to handle the kinds of transactions that we're looking at, as well as the the uh, uh, large scale storage. So a lot of uh, examples in the FSI area for this, and also with our networking. Uh, to be able to data center networks as well as uh, campus networks for uh, large uh, groups of, of at, at headquarters, as well as the SD-WAN to go out to the branches. So um, what we're working with around the partners, as I mentioned, is to make sure that we can help you in all areas around the architecture, uh, smart branches, the core systems, data, and mobile. So it's we can't do everything, uh, but we have a very large group of partners that we can bring in uh, to be able to work with us and with our customers to be able to provide the complete solution. And we have a few of them uh, shown here. So um, in uh, conclusion, we have that the, we really think that being able to do your banking anywhere uh, can be made better uh, by working with Huawei in these areas so that uh, we can bring our values around technical innovation, uh, openness and cooperation, the partner environment, uh, and the global experience that we have, we think uh, it can really uh, be uh, valuable uh, as well. So with that, I'm going to wrap up and we'll be available to answer any questions uh, that you might have now. Thank you very much. That's great. Uh, thank you so much, Ron, for that uh, whirlwind guide through what is uh, an exciting but uh, somewhat complex new landscape of mobile first uh, cloud based technologies there. So um, thank you so much for, for those insights. Um, I would like to you know, encourage everybody. This is your opportunity to reach out to Ron and uh, 
ask your questions. Uh, we, we have this uh, expert here, so please do connect. Well, we do have uh, one question that has come in um, that is more about uh, how do we involve those who are maybe disconnected from this? So this, I think this is a financial inclusion question is what about people who do not have access to smartphones or data connections? Because you know, obviously that's about 60% of the African region. Right, so that's one of our uh, key uh, capabilities of our uh, mobile wallet platform, um, which has been widely deployed uh, in Africa. And I think our, our, our biggest uh, use case is in Kenya with uh, the M-Pesa platform. And you're right, the, the uh, huge percentage of the unbanked people, they don't have smartphones, they just have a normal you know, flip phone or, or whatever, and they don't have a data plan. Um, and so our mobile mo uh, wallet system uh, includes the capabilities to support those kinds of phones. Well, technology uh, called USSD. So essentially, um, you you put in a you know star X Y Z you know one two three pound uh, like your you, you used to use to be able to top up your uh, your airtime, right? And what you get back is a menu that says. You know, do you want to put in money? Do you want to send money to somebody? Do you want to pay a, your bills? And you choose the, the menu items. So this is very much a part of expanding the financial inclusion. And, and you want to put it into the same platform as the smartphone kinds of things so that um, they can do a lot of these things that don't require a camera, right? So you can pay your bills, you can um, get a small loans, you can get overdraft into your wallet and you don't need a bank account. You can do it all within the wallet. So that's a strong capability that we have. Uh, it really helps to people to, uh, that don't have a bank now uh, to be in the future um, uh, banking customers because you can offer financial services to them. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you've talked a lot about, uh, you know, the need for transformation uh, within the banking uh, banking uh, industry. I mean, what would you say is the, the biggest challenge for incumbent banks looking to, to start on this journey? It's internal. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's your own organization. Um, the, the biggest challenge for banks to be able to uh, offer new services to compete with fintechs is to be able to change their internal uh, organizations. There's an awful lot of inertia. Um, you know, we've been doing it this way for years and, you know, nobody wants to change. Um, you know, this is, this is my system. You can't touch it. And it, so it really, um, it needs uh, to be driven from the top. Um, I, I, we've seen more uh, digital transformations fail because you know, the CEO appointed a, an, a, a chief transformation officer or they set up a, um, a transformation office, um, but it never gets uh, the traction, right? And so it's necessary to really be able to get full buy-in. The CEO has got to drive transformation, otherwise it's not gonna work. Okay, great, great. Um, so we've had a couple of questions come in and they're, they're both sort of, I think, a, a bit related. Uh, so Swadish is asking, um, he says, great presentation. Uh, how about distributed ledger technology or blockchain in the use of digital transformation in financial services? And Ranu uh, is asking something similar. How do you see the use of blockchain technology in digital transformation of banks? And do you have any live examples? So the distributed ledger technology uh, is going to be uh, very important. And in fact, we actually have um, that the blockchain as a service, if you will, as part of our public cloud. Um, and But it will be in areas, things like uh, secured uh, financing um, and supply chain kinds of things where you can track, um, you use the distributed ledger to be able to track the, and, and particularly smart contracts is the, is really the key here. So that as a uh, product moves through the supply chain that you can automatically trigger payments, plus you have complete traceability uh, throughout that journey. So you can offer new kinds of uh, loan products, new kinds of financing uh, services. Um, we've, uh, it also can really help in risk management uh, where you're doing secured financing of uh, things that, that are, are hard to track and and you, you know, in, in, in China, we had a few years ago, quite a, a major 
um, uh, yeah, uh, problem where the the people that were having uh, some commodities uh, would pledge the same commodity multiple times to different lenders. Um, and blockchain uh, distributed ledgers can solve a lot of those problems. Huawei is very involved in some areas around the public health, uh, public safety uh, as well, where um, you have problems with um, the the uh, keeping track of, you know, is this, uh, this, is this organic thing that I'm looking at in the store really an organic thing, right? I want to be able to scan the the QR code on that and see, you know, where all the way back to the farm it came from. Uh, so you can solve a lot of uh, counterfeiting and, and mislabeling, those kinds of things. So ELP uh, and particularly smart contracts are going to be very important, but they're it's going to be in new kinds of uses. It's not going to be, you know, I'm going to replace my financial ledger uh, with, with blockchain. The, the technology won't support that for quite a long time. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, yep. If there are any more questions, we are uh, reaching towards the end here. This is your, your last chance to, to submit a question. But just while we wait to see if, if anybody else has anything they want to ask, uh, my background here is in uh, skills and capacity building, Ron. So I have a question for you with regards to uh, any students who might be out there who are beginning their careers in this space. What was the advice that you would give them and, and where should they be focusing? Um, so <laughs> there's huge opportunities in financial services for uh, for kids that are you know coming out of school. Um, everywhere from the you know software development to the the uh, operations to the the uh, customer facing activities and so uh, the the key is really to to rethink your yourself right to be able to uh, put make yourself agile make yourself uh, a constant learner one of the biggest challenges that we have found um in uh, employees in in financial services is that they stop learning Right. I've been doing it this way for years and, you know, um, and I'm I'm not I'm comfortable with uh, doing anything else. And so it's really critical. People, kids coming out of school now have got to understand that they're going to be um, learning for the rest of their lives and they need to drive it themselves. Right. You, you don't wait for your company to say, oh, here's a class that you could go to. Right. You need to look out and say, Here's what I'm interested in doing. Here's the new things that are happening here. And, and bring it back to your company as well, because that's a real part of being able to advance your career. But I'm, you know, obviously a little uh, long in the tooth here. Um, and I started out with my uh, doing uh, punch uh, punch card kinds of, of uh, software programming. And over the years, learned lots of new languages uh, and have... Um, and I used to not be able to do any public speaking, and I've more or less solved that problem. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's constant learning, just constantly challenge yourself and have fun, right? Do things that really, that stretch you and that are fun for you. Um, don't, you know, get yourself in a place where you hate going to work every morning. I, I couldn't agree more, Ron. I think you've got uh, some fabulous advice there uh, for, for those listening. And, and, you know, I think this applies to any stage of your career journey. Um, you know, as Ron's just said, uh, there's always opportunities for learning and that there's so much new happening out there that, uh, you know, that you can get your teeth into. And we're, clearly you've come a long way since the punch cards, Ron. Uh, <laughs> So um, I think that brings us probably to the end of today's presentation. Um, I'm getting a lot of feedback through. I, I know the audience has, has very much enjoyed uh, what you've presented today, Ron. And I'm pleased to say that Ron is, will be sharing his presentation uh, with you, uh, with all attendees after this session. Uh, the video of this session will also be live shortly on uh, the Mauritius Africa FinTech Hubs uh, platform. So do uh, take another look at it because there was a lot to digest in, in here. And obviously uh, we're happy to connect you to Ron if you have uh, uh, questions or follow up with Huawei that you'd like to pick up on. So that leaves me to say thank you so much, Ron. Uh, for today's presentation and for what you've shared. 
Thank you to our audience for giving up uh, your time today uh, to be part of this session. And we look forward to welcoming you to subsequent uh, sessions uh, at the Mauritius Africa FinTech Hub. And in fact, we do have a second session lined up with uh, another expert from Huawei for next month also. So do please join us for that and keep an eye on our social media to learn more. Okay, thank you so much, Ron. And uh, thank you thank very you. much. Thanks, thanks to everybody for their time. And Lisa, thank you very much for your uh, your stellar work in putting this together for us. Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. Thank you.